I'm going to tell you why. During the last six years, I have bought three TVs. Uh, quite massive, I must add. Uh, 85 inch, 82 inch, and another 85 inch recently. And I have gone from high class, the premium class, to the low end class and the middle class. I've done it all. From what I have seen, especially in the 85, 82 and above inch uh, range, is that it's not stable. And what do I mean by not stable? Let's say you want uh, premium, high class, uh, 80 plus inch TV. It's going to cost you anything from $4,000 to $8,000, perfectly. 4K, 8K, doesn't matter. You can find 4K TVs for that price very easily. But you must consider, as an average Joe, that it's a decent amount of money and they are just not built to last and I'm really serious about this because this is my third TV in this regard or in this sense better said the electrical line is terribly stable here I know because I have some electrical tools and I know that it's very stable. I've never had a single problem related to electronics, never. Can't touch wood. Okay. And even so, the boards, normally TVs are divided in three boards. So you have the TCON board, you have the main board, and you have uh, the power board. They fail. And they fail a lot. And I'm talking about three to five years, you're going to get a failure. And it doesn't really matter if you got yourself a $4,000 model, if you got yourself an $2,000 model, if you got yourself a $1,000 model, they will fail. And once you begin to enter these ranges, 80 plus inches and above, you're going to see that not many people have them. And since many people do not have them, they are not easy to repair because there are no spare parts lying around. I mean, for uh, the last model that went down on me, uh, a premium model from Samsung from 2018, there were only three people across the whole world that actually had a compatible uh, TCON board for sale, second hand. And Samsung, I went into Samsung's page uh, dedicated for uh, technicians and service and so forth. Uh, no, they might have some ICs here and there, but you can't actually fix the board with what Samsung has in stock. So you're basically looking at, let's say you spend $4,000 or 4,000 euros, whatever. You're basically looking at three to five years max. Maybe more if you are lucky, if you are lucky. And it depends on the hours of use, of course. I'm, I'm a guy that likes cinema. I'm a guy that likes to play games, both old games and new games. I use the TV every day and uh, more than an hour, actually.
actually. <laughs> Perhaps too much. I can easily watch uh, two or three movies a day in the night or if I have nothing to do in the day or if I don't want to do anything that day. I can easily spend the whole day watching movies and playing games, mostly watching movies. So, let's say six hours per use per day, easy, and we're talking about three to five years maybe for 4,000, uh, that, that's a lot of coin. And the worst part is that, let's say you don't want to repair it yourself. Let's say uh, you call in Samsung, or you call in LG, or you call in Hisensen. Well, these guys have these uh, official repair shops across uh, a whole nation, normally. Let's say I call Samsung and Samsung will divert me towards a repair shop that might be 100 kilometers from here or 200 or 300 kilometers from here. Take this into consideration. Even if they had these pieces, the amount that they are going to charge you to travel to your location, do on-site repairs or actually take the TV, and we're talking about big TVs here, not small, big TVs. It's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. And they're gonna make you pay an arm and a leg because imagine they take the TV, when they dismantle the TV, or when they are traveling with the, the van or the car or whatever, something happens to the TV, yeah, a small bump, whatever. They're responsible for that. And since it's a great risk to even manipulate these TVs normally, they can easily break uh, being installed and dismantled. They're gonna charge you for that. And we are talking maybe for a $4,000 TV easily, they're going to charge you a thousand dollars or a thousand dollars five hundred. So even if you would have the money, because you, one way or another you raise that money in the first place, be it uh, through savings or you made a small credit, uh, whatever, or you just have the money. It makes a lot more sense from an economics perspective to actually sell that TV per pieces on the net and buy another one. Okay, the first model maybe cost you 4,000, but they're asking you 1,500 for repairs. Maybe you can sell the pieces for $400, $500 in total. And then if you're going to pay $1,500 for a, a repair, why not just place $2,000 or $2,500 and get a new model from 2023 or 2022? It doesn't matter what year. It, it matters. <laughs> what matters is that it must be the most recent uh, model production. That way you can rest assured that probably that TV is going to last you three to five years. So considering all of this and considering you're uh, the common Joe, you know, Joe on the road to Rome, you really want to spend the least amount of money on a big screen TV because you like cinema or you like uh, a cinema-like experience in video games as well. Go for less. And there are many channels on internet and you have web pages and you have RT ratings 
don't trust those guys. Uh, they're, they, they go bonkers with their numbers and, and a lot of them don't even care about, uh, about TVs of this size or of these categories, be them uh, low end, uh, high end or, or middle ground. Um, they're going to tell you what not about color accuracy, uh, calibration this, uh, image frames, interpolation. They're going to tell you a lot of things. But from what I have seen, and I have always liked uh, these subjects, I'm not new to this. I, I've had a lot of uh, very high, high quality CRTs, low quality CRTs as well. Uh, computer monitors, professional computer monitors, both CRT and LCD and the like. From what I have seen, a $1,000 80-plus inch TV is going to give you a good experience. It's going to give you a good experience. One of the reasons for this is that TV manufacturers, when they reach these sizes, it doesn't matter in what range. It might be the 7,000, the 8,000, the 9,000 range. I mean in the model, the model number. That for them is the elite piece. If you take, for example, the Samsung 7,000 line. From 55 inches to 80 plus inches, there is a great difference in quality. What do I mean by this? Well, a lot of 55 inch panels are edge slit. You know, the light is coming from the edges. And that is not as good as a direct backlit panel. Since you are in the 85 uh, inch range, you can't actually do well edge lit. So these panels are naturally backlit. And any TV connoisseur can tell you that backlit is always better than edge lit. At least from my experience it is, and I'm sure from, from more than one person it is. Normally, these 85 plus models have more ports than the 50 and 40 and 60 inch models of the same range, same model. They have uh, possibly a better CPU, a better image processor. Uh, they even have better sound sometimes uh, from, you can take a 50, 55 inch TV from Samsung and it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have a subwoofer, but once you begin to go into the 85 inches, it doesn't matter if it's a cheap line or it's a more expensive line. You do get a sort of subwoofer. It either it's made with one way or another, or, per or perhaps you have a instead of a one-way speaker, you have a two or a three-way speaker. You know, uh, you have your high sounds, you have your middle sounds, and you have your low sounds. And just having that low sound in a two-way or, or in a three-way speaker and considering the, well, the, the TV itself, the amount of space the sound has to jump around, you get a sort of a vibration, a, a sort of subwoofer. So my recommendation for the Common Joe is if you've been saving up money, keep that money, go on vacation, take your wife or your spouse or your boyfriend or whatever, take them out, uh, have some fun, or just save that money and spend a thousand, a thousand five hundred on a cinema-like experience at home. You don't need the four thousand or eight thousand dollar model—it's it, it just—it's just not worth it, unless 
you actually have the money, meaning that you're actually rich. And I'm not talking about uh, I'm not talking about a small business owner that can throw away uh, six thousand dollars easily because they don't exist. I'm talking about someone that makes a lot of money. Then okay, you want the eight thousand dollar model, buy it. It's gonna cost you in in the long run. You're going to gain a very marginal jump in quality. And believe me, there is a marginal jump in quality. Whatever these guys on the net and RT ratings tell you, it's marginal, okay? And you're gonna pay that plus. And if you have another friend that comes to your house or a family member, well, you can brag about it as well. But the truth of the matter is that with a $1,000, $1,500, maybe $1,700 model, you're going to get a very decent cinema-like experience. And you're not gonna spend so much money as for it to break in a few years, normally when the warranty is out, because uh, that's all very calculated as well. And you're gonna have that money to spend somewhere else. And if you like to play games, OLED is not worth it. They're going to tell you, oh, if you buy uh, a 77-inch uh, OLED screen, you're going to get the cinema-like experience with the OLED colors and latency. We're talking about milliseconds. Milliseconds. And we're not talking about 200 or 300 milliseconds. We're talking about 8. 9, 10, 14, that's miserable. I don't care what people say about competitive and uh, this or that, it's not real. I mean, I used to play Counter-Strike with 200 latency, online of course, and I still got first places many, many times with people that had much less latency. If you're really worried about latency, you don't even play online. And much less you buy yourself an OLED. You, you use a CRT, a, a professional CRT computer monitor. That's going to give you one-to-one -one smooth motion. You're gonna be quick. You're gonna have good colors. If you're that serious about uh, latency and competitive gaming. So, don't sweat it. With 10, late, with 10 ms of latency, with 14 ms of latency, with 20 ms of latency, you are good to go. And the retro community, they're out of their minds, the majority of people, because they're always worried about the latency, the latency, the latency. And they're even worried about 10 milliseconds. It's ridiculous. No, it's not a problem. Maybe, maybe if you're a very high level speed runner, but no, that's not the day-to-day -to, -day to use. That's not the day-to-day -to -day use. And even if it was, if you're a high level speed runner, you wouldn't even be using an LCD, even if it's OLED. This is true. So, spend 1,000, maybe 2,000 max on that big ass green TV, and you are set to go. When you get richer, you can spend more, but it will not be well spent even if you are richer because they always fail and they're going to give you a headache in the future. So, uh, this is what I think about very large screens. Uh, my recent purchase is a 7,145 uh, from Samsung, uh, 85 inch. And it cost me $1,000 an author. In comparison to the two other models that went down on me, this TV works.
its image quality is good its latency is m much lower than the 2018 and the 2020 uh, models I, I had the brightness is very good uh, HDR10 whatnot the sound even if I do use a sound system the sound is very good if I would have known this I would have not spent four thousand five thousand three thousand dollars on other models because it's not worth it I hope you can take this to heart and more so to mind because $2,000 or $3,000 is a lot of money. You can do a lot of things, a lot of fun things with that. You can buy things for your sons or your daughters. Uh, you can invite poor people to eat. You can go outside to eat. Uh, you can buy a new sofa. Whatever. It's a lot of money. And it's not worth it to spend it on a TV of that size and that category if you're a common joke. Don't save so much money on that. Trust me, try one of these models. You will not be disappointed. More so if you already have experience with high-end models and you're not totally passing the belt dry and saying, okay, uh, I have nothing more to say on that subject for today and I hope you have a good afternoon.